Hello everybody, welcome to another video from Duncan's Reviews and on this review I'm reviewing the Sebson PIR sensor, it's an internal one for internal lighting. Um, what I've done here as a test, just before I actually install it in a live environment, I've rigged it up with a plug on the end powering the 240 volt source and I've got just a normal test lamp hanging off it. I'm going to put the model number of this on screen for you and there's going to be links in the description where you can buy this from. I bought this from Amazon so I'm going to provide you the links from Amazon. Okay so this is the Sebson um, internal PIR. What its ideal use is is if you want to say replace a light switch in a room and let's say it's like a toilet or something like that and you don't really need the switch any, any you know anymore you just want the light to come on for a period of time you can do that with this particular sensor so the idea behind this for me personally was to install it uh, in a downstairs toilet don't need the light switch it's basically you go in the toilet, you either wash your hands or you go to the toilet or something like that. So it's going to set it to stay on for three minutes. It's got multiple times that you can leave it on for. And you can adjust them on the actual sensor itself at the side there. So I just want to show you that there. You can have, if you can see that, you can have 10 seconds, 30 seconds, 90 seconds three minutes seven minutes or 15 minutes you can also change the lux setting which is how much brightness there is in the room before the sensor will kick in um, as i say i'm going to put this in the toilet so we will um at the end of this, this particular video um i'll show you working in the um in the actual toilet where when i've actually installed it but just for this purpose it's the same principle and I'm going to show you how to set it up. Now, if you've never wired one of these particular sensors before, it can seem a little bit daunting. You don't just replace the switch. Don't get confused with the wiring. Read the manual. Have a look at what it says in the manual. Let's just have a look at this particular picture, for example. There. It shows it quite clear. You've got your AC supply coming in on the right there live and neutral and you've got a live and neutral coming out going to your bulb so depending on how your house is wired and how you're putting this in you might have to jig your wiring a bit i'm going to have to jig my wiring a little bit because um, where this is actually going this sensor is going roughly in the same location that the old light switch was in um now coming from the light switch is just a switch supply now this needs its main supply and its switch supply for how it works as per the diagram there uh, if we just roll this over you'll see as well how it's actually wired the same as that diagram you've got your two neutrals joined together in the middle um, on the left hand side you've got your ac supply in and then on the right hand side the live there the third pin on the right is your switched live so my little lamp is off at the moment so if i was to um switch him on now and if i manage to stay still and not move that will go off roughly after 10 seconds there we go we've gone off now as if i was to move again there you go the lamp will come back on I'll stay on for 10 seconds because that's what it's set to and then it'll go off again so yeah i'm sure you get the idea of how it works obviously it's on the floor at the moment so the range is going to be a bit different to um when it's mounted on the ceiling so there you go it's the sebson pir sensor the model i'm looking at is the ir esa and i bought this from amazon uh, so yeah, I'm going to install it into the ceiling and we'll see how it works. So I just want to show you the ceiling in this toilet here where I'm actually going to put it. 
Um, so I've pre-drilled my hole there. I've just put a little bit of a block of wood inside the loft part um, of this toilet, just so nothing blows down that hole really. But I've pre-drilled that ready. Um, that's where the sensor's gonna be. And hopefully it will work well. Now that hole was a 65 millimeter um, hole saw bit that I used for that 65 mil hole saw bit. Got me that um, hole in the plasterboard. Now that's perfectly fine. I've measured it against it. The device across is roughly just over 60 mil, so um, it's going to fit in there quite easily. I can push the pins up. There's going to be no problem mounting that into the ceiling. So I'll show you on the next um in the next few minutes really <laughs> it's going to probably be the next few days in reality for me to actually get this done but it'll appear on the video like magic straight away so there you go that's uh, my whole pre-cut ready and i'm going to obviously get rid of this um pull cord light switch um once it's all wired in place and as if by magic we are back There you go, one working sensor mounted in the ceiling. Excuse the hole, that's the old pull cord, um, which I haven't yet removed. So there you go, I've installed the sensor. It is working fine. There's my light and there's my sensor. Um, no problems with it, connected it up fine, followed the manual. Um, it seems to work well, it looks nice. Um, obviously I've got like a magnolia creamy coloured ceiling and the sensor's white, but hey ho, um, you're not really going to get a creamy coloured one, are you? I haven't seen many, but there you go. So that's installed. Now, installation was easy and uh, you've got the time setting that's quite easy to understand. You know, I've got it set on three minutes, so the light will stay on for three minutes and then go off. If you happen to be on the toilet longer than three minutes, you just lift an arm up or something and the light will uh, come back on again. But there is one little downside to it. Um, and that is, it's flush, as you see there, it's flush mounted with the plasterboard. Now, if you look how thick my plasterboard is through that hole, it's probably about a centimetre thick. Now, when you look at the sensor, if you... Uh, like it is now, it's pushed in the ceiling, I've mounted it. If I wanted to adjust that, it's literally, the the lock setting is just sitting below the plasterboard, so you can't get a screwdriver in it. You can flick the top of it just about with a screwdriver and make a little groove in the plasterboard enough to move it round. Um, but you can't easily move it around. So I've set it to max locks, which is... Um, only come on at night time when it's dark because I've got uh, like blinds in here there you go so uh, they are pretty much shut most of the time uh, so there you go there you go it's flush mounted it's working and if you've got any questions or comments about it do let me know um, it's worked first time tried all the different time settings on it like I say I've got it at three minutes myself so there's my review of that Epson PIR internal light sensor so i've got rid of my light switch that's the uh, one way to do it and there is my light hope you've enjoyed this video on duncan's reviews if you've got any questions please ask them in the comments please like and share this video and obviously if you're on youtube subscribe to my channel thanks for watching